All right, another almost direct formula based question that is from radioactivity. There are two radioactive elements A and B and the half lives of these are 20 and 40 minutes respectively. And it says initially these samples have equal number of nuclei. After 80 minutes that means that would be four times half life of A and two times half life of B. That means after four half lives of A and after two half lives of B. The ratio of decayed number of A and B nuclei will be. So here one point you have to be careful the absence of mind le may lead to the error because here we have to see the decayed and not the remaining one. So let's see for the first you see that after four half lives one by 16 would be remaining. So the decaying one would be 15 and not by 16 that's very simple and for the second after two half lives you see that one fourth would be remaining. So the decayed one would be 3 and not by 4. So that straightway gives us option number 3 as the correct option. As I said almost direct formula based however here you have to be careful the question has asked the decayed one not the remaining one. So that was question number 69. Let's move to question number 70. Question number 70 from kinetic theory of gas. A bit of calculation is involved but I don't say that the question is very difficult. You could see the PV diagram of a gas and the variation is linear in this way. Initial pressure and the final pressure as well as the volume is given. And during the whole process we require maximum temperature of the gas. That means right from A to B at different stages the temperature would be different. You can just have a visualization in this way like here and here the temperature would be same because the product of pressure and volume is same. So you can just imagine an isotherm which would intersect in this way. The next one would go here. The higher isotherm means there are temperatures which are higher than at A than that at B. So during that process we require to calculate the maximum temperature. For that let's be mathematical. The pressure would be y equals to minus mx plus c. So that's minus p naught by v naught into v plus c that would go to 3 p naught. And this would give me nRT by v where n is the number of moles minus p naught by v naught into v plus 3 p naught. So I get T is equal to 1 by NR into minus P naught by V naught V square plus 3 P naught times V. Now you could easily see here that the temperature volume graph is a parabolic and a downward parabola. So somewhere a point comes where the temperature would be maximum. So you could say for temperature to be maximum the first derivative that's dt by dv that has to be equals to zero. There's no minimum here so there's no point to think what if if the first derivative zero is indicating a minimum there's no point to worry at all and that now comes out to be 1 by nr minus p naught by v naught into 2v plus 3 p naught that's equals to zero. So here this thing would be 0 and this P0 and P0 would get cancelled. So I very easily get V equals to 3 V0 by 2. So this is that particular volume when the temperature would be maximum. And now the question hasn't asked the condition. The question has asked the maximum value of temperature. So that's no problem at all now. I got the condition. You put the value of volume and you put the value of volume right here, you would get the value of temperature and the condition is when the temperature is maximum. So yes, of course, you will get the maximum value of temperature after calculation as option number 4. So this was question number 70. Now we'll move to question number 71. 